please hit that subscribe button. Hey, everybody. Better suited to win the Stanley Cup this season. If you are new to the channel, the Washington Capitals, the Boston Bruins. Locked out and he scores. And we're live. Hey, everybody. It's series preview time as we are just a couple weeks away from real live NHL hockey being played for the first time since the middle of March. Tell you, it's a great time to be a hockey fan. I am really, really excited to see these teams get back on the ice. And I think the 2020 playoffs are going to be really, really fun to watch. So it's time to start previewing all the different series in the play-in rounds this in the play-in round this year. And we're going to start with the number 8-9 matchup in the Western Conference, the Calgary Flames versus the Winnipeg Jets. Before we get into it, I just ask that you please hit that subscribe button if you're new and give this video a thumbs up if you haven't already. Those likes really help the channel a lot and are much appreciated. But let's get started here looking at this matchup between two Western Conference Canadian rivals, the Calgary Flames this season. Finished with a record of 36-27-7 for 79 points, and they were third in the uh, Pacific Division at the time of the season stoppage. They only got to play Winnipeg once this season. They're supposed to be three in a normal year, but they only got to actually play one of those games this year, and they lost in overtime, so their record against the Jets is 0-0-1 in the season series. Calgary scored 2.91 goals for per game uh, this season, which was good for 20th in the league. So not a huge offensive season for the Flames. And really, in general, this year was um, pretty pretty down for Calgary offensively. Um, Johnny Goodrow, Sean Monahan, those guys did not put up the point totals that they normally do. Um, and overall, the, the point totals in general for the Flames were kind of low this year. They also gave up 3.06 goals against per game, which was good for 16th in the league. So right about the middle of the pack there as far as goals against. Um, no, no shining numbers on offense or on defense for this team, but good enough to still make the playoffs. Their power play operated at 21.2% this season, which was good for 12th in the league. So in definitely in the upper half of the league there as far as the power play is concerned. And their penalty kill operated at 82.1% this season, which was good for 8th in the league. So they have a top 10 penalty kill in Calgary. Their leading goal scorer on the year was Elias Lindholm, who finished the year with 29 goals. So um, nobody on the team reached the 30-goal mark this year, but had the season continued normally, Lindholm most certainly would have gotten there, and some other players may have as well. Their leading point scorer this season was Matthew Kachuk with 61 points. That's what I mean when I'm saying guys like Monaghan and Goodrow, and even Kachuk um, didn't have great offensive output this year. I mean, Kachuk led the team, but he only had 61 points. He's a guy that I think could have been up in the 75-point range somewhere in there. Um, Goodrow is a guy who, you know, you would have, have expected a lot more points from. Same with Monaghan. Um, it was just kind of a down year offensively for this group. And Matthew Kachuk also led the team in penalty minutes. Uh, he had 74 penalty minutes on the season, and it's not surprising given the kind of player that Kachuk is, the big, you know, power forward role who definitely gets under the opponent's skin and uh, is not afraid to get involved physically at all. So he can, you know, lead the team in points and he also led the team in penalty minutes. And that's just the kind of player that Matthew Kachuk is. Switching over to look at Winnipeg now. Winnipeg finished the season with a 37, 28, and 6 record, good enough for 80 points. Now, Winnipeg had more points this season than the Flames. However, they are the lower seed because it was based off of point percentage, and Winnipeg played more games than Calgary did at the time of this end of the season was stopped. So, um, so based on point percentage, Calgary was slightly better. Um, they won uh, in overtime their one game against the Flames this year, like we said. So they have a 1-0-0 record in the season series. They have a slightly better offense than uh, the Flames do, scoring 3.00 on the dot goals for per game this year, which is good enough for 17th in the NHL, so pretty mid-pack there. 
Goals against, however, um, is also better and a pretty good number here. Top 10 in the league in goals against uh, uh, goals against per game, 2.83. So pretty good year, actually, defensively. And, you know, that was a huge question mark for this Winnipeg team going into the season after losing Truba, after losing Myers, after Bufflin not showing up and playing. Um, you know, that was a huge, those were huge hits to their defense core and it was kind of a just thrown together decor and they actually were one of the better defensive teams. And obviously a lot of that is the season that Connor Hellebuck had in goal where, uh, he was just absolutely outstanding this year and is certainly in the running for the Vezina trophy. Their power play was 15th in the league at 20.5% on the season. Um, so right mid pack there. Uh, a little bit less uh, than, or a little bit lower than um, Calgary's, and their penalty kill was not very good. Seventy-seven point six percent on the penalty kill this year, twenty-second in the league, so definitely not great there. Um, and that's something you know to watch because Cal Calgary has a you know pretty decent power play. If there's a lot of penalties in this series, you know that could that could be something that really plays a role in who wins this series um, for sure. If Calgary's on the power play a lot and can capitalize on those chances, that's not going to help Winnipeg's chances at all. Um, their leading goal scorer this year was Kyle Connor with 38 goals on the season. Huge, huge year again for Kyle Connor, who has become a consistent 30-plus goal scorer. And um, he had a monster year again this season and would have certainly gotten to 40 had the season continued normally. Leading point scorer was, well, Kyle Connor and Mark Shifley. They tied for the team lead, both with 73 points on the season this year. So obviously there's more offense here in um, Winnipeg than there is in Calgary, just as far as point totals and goal scoring and things like that. And Mark Shifley also led the team in penalty minutes. And that one, I think, is a little bit surprising. But Shifley finished the year with 45 penalty minutes, and that was enough to lead this team. So Winnipeg, certainly not one of the tougher teams in the league, not a team that racks up a lot of penalty minutes. Obviously, no one no one on their roster even hit the 50 mark. Um, so, you know, that's that plays a role in it. But still, I think it's very kind of surprising to see Mark Shifley as the penalty minute leader. So in my predictions, um, I've talked about this this series and I'm sticking you know I'm not going to change any of my predictions my prediction for this series is still Calgary in five and a lot of that is just because I really think the Flames there's got to be a center of urgency here the Flames need to win this series this is a Flames team that continually loses early in the playoffs usually in the first round and if this core group of Monaghan, Goodrow, Giordano, um, Brody, these guys ever want to make a run, they've got to find a way to, you know, get out of the first round. And they continually lose in the first round over and over and over again. Um, and, and you know, there, there's just, there's got to be a sense of urgency here for them to just do it. Like, you have to do it. Event, you have to do it. And if, if they lose this series, I, there could be some wholesale changes in Calgary. Like, I'm talking about, like, trading Goodrow, maybe making other major roster moves like th there's gonna have to be wholesale changes if this team loses in the play-in round and doesn't even you know make make any sort of a run in the playoffs this year um it's just time and time again that they continually lose early in the playoffs and there's got to be a sense of urgency here for for calgary to come out and get this done and i think that's going to be what really that that desperation is going to decide this series and Calgary is going to pull it out. But that by no means uh, means that uh, Winnipeg can't win this series. This is one that I expect to be very, very close. Um, I think it's one of the best matchups in all of the play in round, all of the qualifiers. Uh, I, it's going to be an incredibly fun series to watch. And I think really going into this, this one's a coin flip. This is an absolute coin flip as far as who wins it. Um, you know, it's pretty much a 50-50 shot for either of these teams. So, you know, the matchup is interesting. You've got, uh, you know, two teams here that had okay seasons this year and weren't super great, but weren't certainly bad teams. They were, they were you know, pretty decent teams this year, but kind of in the middle 
of the pack a little bit. And you see that in a lot of their numbers, whether it's goals, goals against, special teams, kind of mid-pack in, in a lot of those uh, categories for both these teams. And that pretty much sums up where they're both at this season. So it's going to be a really, really interesting matchup. It's going to be a lot of fun to watch for sure. And um, it's going to be very, very close. And, and I can't wait to see which team is able to pull it off and come out on top and move on to the regular 16-team playoff. So there's the Calgary and Winnipeg preview. Like, comment, share, subscribe, follow on social media. All those links are down in the description below. If you'd like to further support the channel, links to our Patreon and merchandise store are down in the description as well. Keep spreading the word about this channel. Let's keep this thing growing. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll talk to you guys soon.